Well, we're all used to a good Ingham drama, aren't we? Every single day is an Ingham drama. In fact, they make an entire TV show out of it, don't they? We've all seen it every day. Um, currently, they're in Dubai uh, doing whatever it is that they're doing, right? It's fabulous. So, this one, though, absolutely blew me away. Completely. Did not expect it. Um, <laughs> I've got to share it with you. I'm sure many of you have heard about it already, but this are my very specific opinions on the on the situation so recently uh, there was a post posted in the um, everything in um super secret um Ponzi group thing uh, that chris and sarah run for their little kitty fam and this person said this Sarah, please don't take this the wrong way. I have noticed since Dubai you're glowing and you're wearing brighter clothing. Please, please, please. You are not your. Sorry. Side note. I know. Um, you're glowing and you're wearing brighter clothes and you honestly seem a lot happier. I see it in every vlog. One life. Live it. Indeed. Honestly, the best decision for the family. So, um, a very glowing report there from One Eye Fam. It uh, sounds like Sarah is doing great. I haven't noticed it, to be honest myself, but anyway, it's just me. Uh, so, Sarah replied this, a very full and frank response, which quite honestly shocked the fuck out of me. So, here's what she said. This 100%. And do you know why that is? It's not because I'm somewhere hot, not because I'm decorating another house, not because I'm minutes from beaches and pools, not for the shopping, not because I feel like I'm on holiday. It's because I finally feel safe. It's because my children are safe. People have so many misconceptions about Dubai. But if genuine, if you mean I've, I think she means I've anyway, if genu genuinely never felt safer in my life. We have been looked after so well by the company who moved us here, the friends we have made who have literally gone above and beyond for us, etc. So, yeah, the, the people who were trying to sell you <laughs> property, um, yeah, strangely enough, they were being very nice to you. You know, it's not like they're, they're working on commission or anything like that. <laughs> that. That couldn't possibly be it. No, they really, truly and honestly wanted to be friends with the famous Sarah and Chris Ingham. You know, not that they've heard anything about um, what Chris has been up to, you know. <laughs> We never publicly spoke about how bad things got in the UK for us. Only a select few people in this group know too, but when I say it got bad, I really mean it. To, the, to a point where we were often worried for our life. The back of our house was set on fire in the early hours and investigators concluded it was malicious, but nothing more was done. I I just want to say, right? <laughs> I'm thinking if um, if this was true, right? I'm not saying it's not true, but it's like I would accuse Sarah Ingham of lying. Come on, right? If it was true, I'm thinking that you would in involve the um, the the fire service. You know, to put out said fire, would you? Possible? Maybe the police might pop around as well. Maybe just for a cup, <laughs> just for a cup. They might pop around for a cup or something like that. Um, I mean, fire engines themselves are huge beasts, aren't they? Right? They are absolutely huge, not to be missed, right? But um, it's very odd then that um, I've been told by people on your street that. There's never ever been any fire engines attend or police attend your property. It just seems like 
some form of embellishment might be going on here because um, I'm thinking that somebody somewhere might have, in fact, seen, you know, <laughs> a, a huge big red fire truck turn up at your house, right? But maybe that's just me. Maybe it's it's um, a UK thing. Maybe in Dubai they could do it, like you know, invisibly or something. Because Dubai are better than UK, clearly. Anyway, yeah. Um, <laughs> so what else? What else, Sarah? What's happening? So she goes on to say, and I know trolls will say, well, if I had to deal with that, then I'd get offline. But why should we stop doing what we absolutely love for strangers who can't let others live their life the way they want to? So Sarah is saying, basically, why should we have to stop doing what we love? Because people want to like set fire to our house and um, you know threaten us and stuff like that it's fair enough i get your point of view sarah i do i understand exactly where you're coming from however when it involves the fact you you know you're trying to protect your six kids i feel like that supersedes any moralistic ground that you may be trying to prove here but i'm you know maybe it's just me you know, I would want to protect my kids, but maybe you just don't, right? Because if somebody is getting into your property, the you know, close enough to your house that they're setting fire to to something, that, you know, I'm thinking that that's a little bit more than just like um, trolls, if you know what I mean. It is quite a serious thing, and I'd be seriously looking at um, stopping, like vlogging taking your kids away um stopping um showing people where you live and things like that i think that's quite a serious thing so um but clearly not serious enough for sarah ingham to stop doing what she loves because why the hell should she she goes on to say police did give us a direct number for emergency help so if we use that number we would be a priority for 999 calls <laughs> but aside from that until one of us was actually killed they were useless so yet another opportunity obviously for her to have a dig at uk right because why why not but what the hell is this number that she's been given in order to um get like is it like the bat phone or something you know get you direct access to um emergency you know above and beyond everybody else that may need an emergency help um yeah sarah ingham and her brood are number one priority for the police or fire or ambulance or anything like that it's, that is um i'm thinking that, that that's a load of shit i'm 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 sorry that's just my opinion because i i don't know i've never had uh, priority access to um, emergency services before <laughs> you have to pay extra for that is it like vip and there you are right you've been given priority access um and you're complaining about having to pay taxes to the people who are giving you protection it's um i, I feel for you sarah i feel that you are um maybe not getting value for money i think that may maybe that's the issue here so she goes on to say, even when things were sent to the house, multiple death threats daily, in detailed death threats even to social services on how we would be skinned in front of our children, but not before the girls were raped in front of us, and it would be social services' fault because they didn't take the kids away from us when they were warned. So... I'm actually disgusted beyond anything I can possibly explain right now. Um, basically, what she's saying here is that they've had threats on the girls, right, to, to rape them, right? People have threatened to do that to their children... And yet still, still, she takes the moral high ground 
and won't come off social media, won't take her kids off social media, because why the hell should she? Sarah Ingham loves to vlog, Sarah Ingham loves to make money, Sarah Ingham needs to do whatever the fuck she wants to do, but her kids are being threatened in that disgusting way, and yet still she won't take them off and protect them. What sort of mother would actually do that? I get her argument why should we have to stop doing what we want to do because blah 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 right but if your children are being threatened in any way shape or form right but in that way in particular that's one of the most disgusting things that anybody can threaten um or or do or anything right to a child i'm sorry but if that is actually true and somebody said sent that that's beyond the pale of of anything right but sarah ingham is saying that she shouldn't have to stop vlogging because she loves vlogging and yet her kids have been threatened and i'm absolutely disgusted that she thinks her feelings are more important than protecting her kids and i'm yeah i'm honestly shocked but the second point to this is that she's put it on a public platform she's put it on a public forum to many other people and it's now like you know it's on the internet right so she's actually putting it out there that her kids are being threatened in this way right her kids are going to read that her kids are going to read that they have been threatened with rape I'm sorry, but even whether it's true or not true, putting it out there on the internet for her kids to read is absolutely disgusting. I'm sorry, but there's no excuse for that whatsoever. Imagine being your child. Imagine being 12-year-old Isla reading that and, you know, you're now fearing one of the worst things that you any child can fear it's disgusting right absolutely abhorrent i'm sorry sarah you are a disgusting horrible horrible mother if you can call yourself a mother she goes on to say even when they contacted police on our behalf they did nothing 100 percent of emails daily from freaks i didn't feel safe there anymore even after spending a fortune upgrading our security system. Speaking of which, your security system um, would have picked up, I would have thought, anybody that was messing about with arson behind your house, right? So uh, I would assume you saw who it was. And, and what did you do with that information? Give it to the police. I know you love your CCTV and, and putting it out on the internet. Maybe you could have put out an appeal, you know, um, help us find this person who might, you know, set fire to our house, that sort of thing. That didn't happen, did it? I mean, you've done worse things to random people, but to an actual arsonist, no, not, not at all. Anyway, she goes on to say, so the only option was left was for us to leave the country and move to one that actually takes things like this very seriously. I'm sorry, but the UK is way in decline and we as a family are safer out of it. But um, uh, that is until they find out what Chris has done. And they, yeah, I mean, I don't think they take too kindly to that sort of behavior anyway. That being said, we're all so, so happy right now. If never found, if never felt more happy and content in a very long time, I feel it safe for my children to be out without us. Isabel is out at the mall today and with, with her friends and I'm not sat here clutching my phone, panicking until she comes home. Dubai is one of the safest countries in the world and you really do feel it here. So much more respect for authorities and that's what we need. 
I finally feel like I can breathe again, and I'm glad it shows. So, they feel safe. Fabulous stuff, Sarah. I'm glad that you feel safe, finally. Um, she goes on to say, Imagine this, 24-7 for months and years on end. And this isn't even the worst of it. So, she shows some screenshots of notifications for emails, which she has received. And... It says, I wonder if there's a hitman I can call in Dubai to hunt you down and effing slaughter you. I want them to slit your effing throats. Um, why oh why won't you just hurry up and effing die? You C-U-N-T's. So, question for you, Sarah, right? You've got a person, right, first first up, you're claiming that Dubai is the safest country, or not country, the safest place in the world, and no crime ever happens there, and it's so amazingly safe, etc, etc, etc. But on the other hand, you've got somebody claiming that they can hire a hitman in Dubai. So which is it, safe or can you hire a hitman? I don't know, right? Also, you've got um, people claiming to be able to hire a hitman and they're going to send it to your place. But why is that a problem? Because, you know, you've just moved there and there's no way on earth that anybody knows where you live or anything like that. It's not like you'd be doing anything silly like, you know, I don't know, leaving um, your location, your address in on one of the packages or anything like that you wouldn't be that stupid surely to goodness you wouldn't do something like that but of course you're that stupid you're fucking morons honestly i've never come across people as stupid as you you go on about how incredibly unsafe you felt and how you're this that and the other you've had all these death threats etc etc and then the moment you move to a new country, it's amazingly safe, etc., etc., and then you decide to show everybody exactly where you live within days, right? Within days, I I feel that um, <laughs> it's either not true or you're just that bloody stupid. More messages were, I would really love to murder the pair of you right now, and I see you haven't killed yourselves yet, then please hurry the F up and die. So, those are very intense messages that she's received. Um, I mean, I'd ignore them if I were you, Sarah. Yes, they sound bad, obviously, but, you know, I've, I've had threats like this to myself from your very lovely ifam in the past you know um i i don't know what to tell you just just ignore it honestly it's not they're not going to come to dubai i don't think right and um they're not going to hire a hitman whoever this is is like um a child right <laughs> um more than likely um it could be an ex ifam uh for, for all you know, probably is actually, to be fair. I mean, I found a little bit unhinged at the best of times. But the other option, obviously, is it could very well be Chris. There is a theory going around that it could well be Chris um, putting the fear of God into Sarah in order to facilitate the moving and saying, you know, so Sarah thinks that they're being threatened when they're actually not because chris wants to move to dubai because let's face it chris probably does feel unsafe in the uk because of what he did and people are always calling him out in public and things like that so i get that he probably does feel kind of like, like unsafe but the rest of this i have no idea i don't know you know it seems a bit extreme a lot of it um but at the end of the day as i said that if it is true what's being said here then absolutely 100 percent they need to take the kids off off youtube there's no excuse for continuing to vlog them there's no excuse for continuing to show everybody where they live 
um, the locations and um, room layouts and um, exact, you, you know, you can see what's actually happening here is what they always do when they move, right? People have already found exactly where they live. She's shown her address on a packet, <laughs> on a package. So it's like, are you feeling unsafe or do you want people to know where 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 you live you know and as i said earlier those threats against her kids are absolutely abhorrent and if they are true then you have to take your kids offline there's no excuse for that if you don't it makes you a horrible human being more so it makes you a horrible mother if it's not true putting it out there still makes you a horrible person a horrible human being and a horrible mother right so either way you can't win on this one sarah so i'm sure you're getting the sympathy vote now from your ifam and that's probably what you were aiming for and um yeah you just you do you boo isn't that right so so what <laughs> What do you guys think? Do you think this is real? Do you think this has actually happened? And what do you think of the contents of what she's claiming happened? So please give this video a massive thumbs up, comment all of your thoughts about it down below and subscribe to the channel if you are new. Until next time, take care of yourselves and bye bye.